Because that is Brawl. As a brand new one. Captain Blackheart's Treasure. Brand new asterisk. Each turn, open a chest of three random cards and choose one to put in your hand. They're always a little bit different because of new expansions. I would hope that the Karazhan cards are represented more, but they probably aren't. Valera versus Valera. Well, some of you may be surprised to find some Hearthstone on this channel. Wow. I've been, of course, really, really into Civilization VI, and though the Civ VI AI is not that great, multiplayer is really good, so I would. For those watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see Civ 6 multiplayer videos against with some with lots of twists and turns and diplomacy and refined strategy. And of course, we've got Gadget Zan, an expansion. There are whispers of Gadget Zan, like whispers of the old gods. Look forward to seeing what's uh, coming up there. Rogue's actually really good in this brawl because of the pirates, again. And the weapon is really good, because the 2-3 trades into a 2-3 and then he comes a 2-1 and you stab it with the dagger. I love going to play pirate, of course, next turn. Civ 6 multiplayer kind of reminds me of Hearthstone, because there's a turn timer each turn. Very similar to the rope. That's right, next expansion confirmed by Trump. Whispers of Gadget Sam. You know, Civ 6 and Hearthstone are actually not that dissimilar. They're both turn based strategy games. Whenever you summon a pirate, gain stealth. Uh, I'm gonna run out of pirates soon. Should probably just take the 5 mana 5 6. Got a good curve. My mother does love this face. So I want to not kill that in order to not. Ooh, sabotage could kill the uh, improved weapon. Edwin's gonna be tough to pull off. I'll take sabotage. Those pirates are plunder in the face. Does not scare me. Okay. If I can sabotage that Death Lord, I'll basically win. Or reversing switch is probably good. I could reversing switch plus sabotage. Break the weapon, but I think that's not that important. Reversing switch plus four drop would be best here. Team Pillager, maybe. Yeah. Man, that is a really good spare part there. Incredible. Thank you. Incredible. Wow. Incredible. Let's see, Blade Cultist is a good tempo drop. Tempo drop, I think makes sense. Although that's a weapon that can perfectly deal with a three health guy, but I have plenty of three health guys. And I think I should go Shadow Pan. I have a four plus a two. Not playing that much Hearthstone this week because this is the week of the World Championship. As well as still really interested in uh, in Civilization VI. However, you guys may have noticed an opportunity to pick your champion. Two, five, one. That'd be a strong turn. Are you interested in hearing which champion I picked? Now let me uh, fill you in on who I decide to value here. My pick on the tournament winner was the Korean Jiangsu. And that's who I will uh, get the fat packs from if he wins. Oh. 
Your opponent casts a spell, I'll gain a copy of it and give them a coin. I could give him a sabotage. Giving him a sabotage isn't that bad here. It's big enough to need the sabotage. So many wonderful Getting pretty low. I need to just start discovering burn, like Sinister Strike and Eviscerate. I think a lot of people voted for Thais, and Thais is certainly a good pick. He's the winningest of all the competitors. Uh, ultimately, they're all very good, and probably none of their chances of winning are generously. This is a very generous guess. Remember, there's 16 players and only one grand champion. I don't think anyone's chances of winning are greater than 25%. Uh, a less generous statement would be, I don't think anyone's chances of winning that one are greater than 15%. I mean, if you have a 10% chance of winning that tournament, you're in really good shape. Because, after all, there are 16 really good players. But they've done well to just make it that far. Now, Gang Up is a really bad card in this brawl. Wow. Incredible. Tempo, I guess. Incredible. We are the sword. I actually saw a really good article on uh, some statistics made, and if I were to like, if I wanted to hardcore guess who would win BlizzCon, I would make much the same idea of like analyzing everyone's decks and then deciding. All right, which one is best for this metagame? Uh, that study decided that Chansu had the best decks, but when you account for player skill to pick Thais, and I just decided to go for Chansu because I value decks, and it looks like it, it rated Chansu's chances of winning at about ten percent. Thais is also about ten percent if you rate for skill, and it's definitely possible that people will choke. Greetings. Yeah, speaking of those new quests, uh, right now I have the Warrior Rogue quest, which is why I'm playing Warrior Rogue. I've got to cast 30 mage spells and I've got to play 20 taunts, or is it 30 taunts? That's pretty tough to pull off. Uh, I've heard a lot of things about how casual uh, matches have really become casual now because people use it to complete quests, and that's cool. And you know, Brawl's a good place to finish those quests too. Yeah, I can punish him for not going for my face there, but not. I'm so bad. All right, that order. It's a big tempo boost. Hmm, Blood Cell Raider. Ooh. These are not some very inspiring discoveries. I'm gonna have to discover like a 5 drop, 6 drop, 7 drop, 8 drop. I do have the 3 plus 3. And it's a really specific counter to the Vine Shield. Or just a 3 3. Need to start discovering some high cost cards. For the synergy. That's like pay, playing a 3-mana 5-5? Five, five? 
because the blood knight no sorry three mana yeah three mana five five because that gets like a plus three plus three the vine shield is worth plus three plus three you find yourself getting rusty at hearthstone after not playing for a while the good news is even though i might be rusty in this meta game um it won't matter soon because the new expansion will be out soon enough i'd expect it to be announced at blizzcon not exactly a surprise Everything changes when the new expansion comes out anyways. Take your medicine. Ah, nice apothecary there. You win this okay. Yeah, let me swap out the mage one. That seems too difficult to pull off. What have I done? What have I done? I made a terrible mistake. Alright, we'll just uh, rogue and warrior our way up to five wins, I think. Did Blizzard ask streamers and competitive players about the new tournament schedule for next year? Uh, I wouldn't say that they asked in any sort of formal way, but over the year of 2016, Blizzard employees and players slash streamers have definitely been in the same place at the same time several times. Not to mention, I believe someone very well connected to the scene made it to the tournament. Uh, true, let me just look that up real fast before I give. Hey, what's in the box times two? Uh, Pillager or Zeril? Pillager, I think. That's right, Nimsh is working with the production team now. And Nimsh uh, casts a bunch of stuff, he's in a bunch of Hearthstone circles. So for those not in the know of what's going on in terms of tournament stuff, the year of 2017 there's already been a post up on how there will be changes made. I didn't review it too closely yet, but it seems like the reaction is mostly positive from the pro players. So I'll just be like, yeah, yay. X marks the spot. I can uh, read it during this cavern brawl, I suppose. Oh, shady dealer value. Top deals right there. X marks the spot. Huckster plus hero power. Eviscerate is obviously good. Pirate plus hero power is good though. I think I'll take Eviscerate as the greatest tempo. So here's the basics of the Hearthstone Championship Tour for 2017. Global Season Championships. Combine the Regional Season Championships into Global Season Championships. Each of these Global Season Championships will take place at a select host region and will be held in venues that you can attend in person. Kinda cool. Each of the four regions will send four representatives to the Season Championships each season. I think I go Pillager Buccaneer this turn. It's probably my best card. Thank you. Feed the fish. Hope they don't have AoE. Championship synced with standard. Each of the global season championships will take place during its own content cycle. The next world championship will take place at the end of the upcoming standard year in early 2018. That essentially means that. There's no, like, sudden card changes. Wow, messed the spell, that valley. Mostly valley. So I go all out? Queen's Chosen is best tempo. Yeah, let's go all out. Priest and, uh, board clear. <laughs> They're adjusting the numbers of points from tournaments and ranked play to be more evenly distributed. 
making improvements to the cup system. That's good because one of the main critiques of the uh, system this year is the cups, the open cups, which were really small, gave too many points, probably. And of course, two million dollars for the prize pool. Over two million dollars. It's pretty sweet. It is finished. You win. You asked for it. Victory or death! Come on, fiery Winax. Uh, Battle Rage should be pretty good in this one because pirates fight pirates and then they get damaged. What would you do if you win the world championship of Hearthstone? Bask in the glory. Probably brag a little bit. Celebrate with some popcorn shrimp. Stuff like that. Nizoth the Corrupter for the end game. That would be interesting. This isn't really impactful enough. Let's take Nizoth. Oh, is that... you can't get weapons in this. Can you not? Really, you can. Man, that's a three-card battle rage draw. Possibly right to not do it, because I have Dark Iron Dwarf now. But we're possibly correct to just do both of those. What do you think would help make Hearthstone more interesting, more complicated interactions like magic? I mean, I think it just needs more cards. It's as simple as that. Which I guess you could say complex interactions then. I suppose. Varian Rin. Is Varian Rin good? I'm really greedy this, bro. In this particular game. It uh, pulls out three pirates. So, three pirates are 6-9. 6, 9, and Varian uh, make for good times. Like a 13, no, wait. yeah, 13, 15, 13, 16. Uh. <laughs> Blood Warriors, I guess. Done. Uh. Hmm, I'll just battle rage now. I was gonna think about attacking in Blood Warriors, but that's probably bad. The meta stagnates no matter how many cards you have? No, not always. I mean, yes to some extent, but that's also the point of more cards. You get the new cards out, it changes the meta. The game doesn't stagnate. I mean, that's the point of new cards. Exactly. Rampage is probably my best valley card to take here. I think it would be funny if, uh, I mean this obviously isn't heroic brawl, but it would be funny if people paid a thousand gold to enter this brawl, and then got the prizes for this brawl. I, I do think that would be amusing. Ooh, Malkarok. Doom Hammer? Doom Hammer. I mean, I think that would make for an excellent brawl. A heroic version of this brawl. That would have been... that would be, like... Hilarious. This is... this is... while this is a random brawl, it's not as random as... quite a few of them. There's definitely a uh, scale of randomness. Take another Malkarok. It could be fun. I think I should rampage Malkarok though. Ho oh ho! I actually wanted to know if that would buff that. 
Wow, it does. I was thinking it would be ice block also. Well. It's unfortunate. Oh well. I have him at lethal next turn. Although he's a fireball away from winning. Hmm, maybe just through. I didn't know that Rampage uh, on this would kill it, or would make it happen. I actually forget sometimes what happens in Shadow. I think Shadow Word Death kills Spellbender, and I guess Rampage also does Spellbender. Yeah, yeah, it executes too. Maybe I just felt like giving him a little bit of hope after getting a 4 mana 7 7. This document looks legally he has to stay alive. All I need to do is deal two damage to a minion then to win. Oh, I didn't have it immediately. He could have come back. I must protect the one. Watch your My greetings. The pleasure is mine. It's kind of funny, right? Rampage and Spellbender are both from the base set, which has been around forever. Yet I didn't know what would happen. Is Squid Face better or Shadow Strike? I'll take Squid Face. Hmm. I mean, I guess I could have easily thought about it and been like, yeah, it's, it does buff, but I just didn't remember. Or I didn't think about it. It's the best card, but I think this is right now the better card. 2 mana, 2, 3 better than the Huckster at the moment because of the situation on the board. If he uses his hero power, I can use my hero power. But more realistically, neither of us use our hero power. Hey, Fan of Knives. Ooh, Medivh. The Fan of Knives is pretty good here. I think I go, uh, mm -hmm. I go weapon and then two drop, and then I play this good face on an empty board. Because it's too easy to deal four damage when I don't have a weapon out. Or I could just take the risk and just play this good face. X marks the spot. That's like a must remove. No, I'll use the weapon, and I'll kill that right now. And then at the least I get a, uh, middling weapon. Hey, my first taunt minion for the taunt quest. Could actually just play Shield Master. The reasonable play here against the 2 3. Where shall I Nizoth actually gets back Squid Face and Huckster. That's pretty good. <laughs> Those are 6-6 six, six in value, which makes that an 11-13 in value. Plus, bat, plus death crattle. Death crattle? Death rattle benefits. Hmm, Tomb Pillager. Good one also. Play this while I have the weapon, though. And the format is slow enough. It's good face basically says 4-4 four, four, battle cry deal 2 damage. Or battle cry deal 4 damage, depending on how long you have the weapon. That makes it pretty good. Should I assassinate that? Or should I violate Illusionist? Unfortunately, I don't get the benefit of the weapon.
Alright, so I've got Coin to Zoth next turn. So I guess this turn I try to... I'll go with Pompous. Was the re-weapon Huckster Tooth though? Yes it was, that's why I didn't do it. By playing the Tomb Pillager, which is a 4 cost card, which I needed to if I didn't weapon, then I could speed up into Nazoth. There's always a question of tempo versus value. There's often a question, and that's probably one of the most interesting questions in Hearthstone. That concept of tempo versus value. Lovely. Oh well. That was a solid Nizoth. So basically that's four mana, discard your hand, uh, draw, draw a pirate, which is still something, it's not nothing. I'd rather have this card in my hand than no card, I suppose. be my first loss. It's actually gonna it's gonna be pretty close since we're both top decking, but he can probably find something fairly easily. Oil's decent here. I'd like to think it's still anyone's game. I'll go oil plus stalag. It is anyone's game, but I have to get a little bit lucky. Kinda of too slow to do this. I did choose a high attack card. I was also wondering, maybe I should have traded before doing the oil. I would have sent the 4 4 and the 2 2, and oil might have landed on Pirate, which would kill Ghoul. I couldn't kill any of those, otherwise I risk losing. Actually, I would. Definitely risk losing. Or I would just lose. Behold the rage of the fireland. So I need some way to gain health or taunt. But I'm not out of it yet. Eh? Okay, Slash Burglar. You can do it. Uh, womp womp. Well played. I that would have been a pretty good tree of life. <laughs> 